Hi all, I'm Olhan and we're going to build an AR try-on lens today. Air fashion lenses can provide the ability to try on a look digitally before buying. Express yourself by trying on something you would never try or create outfits that are not even possible in real life yet. With famous brands utilizing AR fashion, designers appearing in the events in digital outfits, and most importantly, technology evolving to make those experiences smooth and realistic, AR clothing is going to soon become a common practice for everyone. At Snapchat allows you to be the first to experiment with all this tech in Lens Studio and share it among the millions of Snapchatters. 3D body tracking and body mesh features were well accepted by creators and resulted in many exciting projects and collaborations. And since AR clothing try-on examples based solely on this tech were still lacking the ability to conform to various body shapes, the new feature was released that allows to configure any mesh to deform correspondingly to the base body mesh. Let's get started! First, we'll need to create a 3D model. Since vertices of 3D model will deform based on the vertex or UV proximity in the vertices of body mesh, we will need to model it accordingly to the reference body mesh. It could be found either on the asset library or on our website. So I went on and imported that to my project. And I am using newly added apples since it works better for modeling poses. It ensures less stretching under the arms and more space to work around the legs. I have the 3D models prepared for me, uh, they just need a little tweaking. But there are also a variety of 3D clothing examples on the asset library. You can just go there and type try on. We can either use these models right away or use them as a starting point for your own 3D models. Ideally, the close mesh would fit around the base body mesh and do not intersect at any point. So I'm going to just go around and edit some vertices. And 3D modeling both for female and male figures are made using the mean body shape that does not always feel natural but it's gonna deform accordingly in the lens studio. Clothes that are worn together should also be modeled with keeping that in mind. For example, pants here do not intersect with the jacket. And it might sound a bit complicated, but there is also a bright side. We don't need any rig for this model. After we're done with creating the 3D models, uh, make sure to apply transformation. Double check that location, position or scale are all reset. And now we can export this 3D model to the Lens Studio. You can also file the detailed guide of how to prepare the external mesh on our Lens Studio website. Let's start with an empty project and bring in our FBX file. Pressing on plus, import from files and import this one more time. If we expand the FBX file hierarchy, we see these two meshes. Those are meshes that are, we are going to be using as an external body mesh, which also adds the body tracking to the scene. And once we did this, we can see a couple new assets added to the resources panel. I'm going to select the full body mesh and rename it to jacket body mesh, for example. Select this asset and go to the inspector panel. Click on the external mesh field and select one of the 3D models we just imported. For example, let's start with jacket. 
also uh, select the poles used for creating 3D model. I'm going to select A poles and select the subset of body mesh that will affect our cloth mesh. It's recommended to experiment with different values of max count and max distance when using proximity matching. It can greatly affect how much the external mesh behaves with body movements and deformation. You can also tweak the transform position here, but since we reset all transform into the editor, we just left it all as it is. When using proximity matching on loser garments, high trial values of max distance. Also, for loser garments, you can try higher values of max count to make the deformations of your external mesh more smooth along the base body mesh. And also, don't forget to take advantage of the different previews available in the studio to check how mesh deforms your various body types. Let's repeat this process and add a couple more meshes, uh, one for pants and one for the occluder. I'm going to create copies of the asset and the scene object. And I'm also using the subset to create the coder and at this point we just need to create the coder material from the resources panel. Nice! So once we have all this set up, it looks kind of flat. The next step would be to set up some materials. I have prepared these materials ahead. They're just simple PBRs materials using base, normal, and material param textures. And once we assign the corresponding material to the jacket and pants, we can see a little more detailing going on here. And uh, what we could do now to customize it is add a texture. So I'm going to import a couple tile textures and try to build the different combinations of uh, jacket and pants. Let's just parent existing outfit. To the outfit one scene object and just duplicate the whole thing and duplicate materials. Double click on the jacket base material to open material editor. And let's see how we can add a little bit of pattern element here. So the first thing I would do, duplicate the texture input and rename it to the pattern texture. Um, then I'm going to multiply the color with the base color and connect that to the Albedo input of the PBR node and also connect the surface coordinate and um, I'm going to apply scaling to the, to only to uh, the pattern coordinate. So this is what we have right now, and once we assign this material, we see texture missing 
and we can go on and set this texture by clicking on the pattern texture field and select for example the plate pattern and also play with UV scaling to configure it to your liking. After repeating this process several times um, and creating a couple of different configurations, we can have a project like this one with uh, three different combinations of jacketed fans. We build our lens based on of an empty project but you could also use a try-on template for this. In this case, you would have those on-screen buttons and carousel that would allow you to switch between different outputs. Digital try-on forces users to use different behavior than just face lenses. It prompts you to stand up and walk away from the camera, which requires a totally different interaction with the user. Trion template provides you with on-screen buttons that can be triggered with your hands while standing away from the camera. Or you can even add a voice interaction to start or stop recording. This can be done by adding system voice command asset from the asset library. Just can you make add orthographic camera and put this asset to our project. Rearrange under targets a little bit. And at this point, if you push lens to device and just say start recording or take a snap, the action will be performed. You can also explore the eraser effect combined with custom mask texture to erase only specific parts of the user body. And at this point, we have our trial lens ready. You might have noticed that this approach works best for the garments that are evenly spaced from the user body. But our team is working on providing you full control on how each vertex behaves, to allow you to achieve physically realistic movement of garments in some places and fitting into others, by combining external body mesh feature with cloth simulation. I hope users build upon these templates, mix and match features, and make Snapchat the best place to talk about fashion.